Okay, we're live. And you can come in if you want to on this. Um, ask the question on Mother Teresa and uh, her letters. Her, her letters that were published by the church that she felt abandoned by God. And uh, Hawkins did talk a lot about this uh, on several occasions. Um, and uh, so Mother Teresa was was at the level of enlightenment. Uh, and in, in fact, uh, uh, you know, lots of miracles did happen around her, and I think it's undeniable she was a high saint. Um, the thing with uh, now, this is the thing. I mean, sometimes uh, the downside, which I sometimes don't say, I'll, I will try and share some of the more negative side, but you know, we'll probably get in smaller and smaller groups uh, on it. So, karma and enlightenment, and, and he also contextualized it because uh, Hawkins got to a higher level. So you, you, uh, once you get to higher levels, uh, at a certain level, when you go into these high states, it can seem, even if you're in a non-dual state, that the bliss leaves. You know, that the, the bliss leaves. And it seems like the love of God has abandoned. You know, like God has abandoned. Uh, even though you're at the level of enlightenment, those extreme bliss states leave. And what happens is that, and that, it's very, very complicated. I mean, there can be lots of karmic things going on under the hood. And that needs also, uh, that also needs to be surrendered as well, even in the state of enlightenment. So, uh, so it needs to be an unconditional surrender to, to God. Even if one, if, if one is in the observer and there's bliss, that's great. But if the, the one is in the observer, and there's not bliss, then one has to retain in the observer and not have a program running that, okay, God, why have you abandoned me and why is the bliss not, not here uh, right now? And the reason is, uh, unless, you can, unless you have access to muscle testing and kinesiology and past life stuff, even, in the, even, even being in the observer and even like it not being bliss, you know, one is witnessing, and there seems to be a lot of uh, um, dullness or du darkness. Well, compared to bliss, everything is pretty dark. So, if there's a period of that, the reason is there's a karmic undoing. Even at the level of enlightenment, there are temptations and karmic undoings. So, you, you can shoot off and go off into enlightenment, and you're in the observer constantly, and, uh, and usually there's bliss, and then suddenly there can be a period where there isn't bliss. And uh, also there can be a contextualization, especially if you're like, yo, I give my life to God, and then you, you go into a bliss state, and there's a, a period of a bliss state, and then it suddenly goes away. There could be a contextualization, which is, uh, I would say it's more a uh, misunderstanding of, um, from some, certain spiritual paths, um, you're not really fully understanding karma, and other paths you are fully aware of karma, so sometimes, even if you go into high states, also realize, and this is, this is really bad news, I'll put it on camera anyway. Um, um, <laughs> often, often um, uh, you know, which is why I, I, I sort of agree with Buddha's thing, that the best way is enlightenment, uh, you know, even though uh, the, the, that's a view, to escape the suffering of this world. As you see, as you get, in the beginning when you do spiritual work, you're just clearing your personal karma. Uh, if you have an intention that you want to, and especially with someone who might have an intention for sainthood, with sainthood, like some people are going straight for enlightenment, so they just want to get, clear my crap, clear any other crap I need to clear and, and just exit as soon as God allows me, you know, into the next realm. But if you've got an intention that you want to clear everyone else's karma, like I want to clear everyone else's suffering, which is probably a saint or an avatar, then as soon as you, after you've cleared your karma, your intent, spiritual intent, is to clear global karma. Yeah. So, oh my God, I've cleared all my crap. You might go off into enlightenment. You might be in a state of bliss. But then it's like, okay, well, actually there is no such thing as separation. And your individual spiritual intent is to clear as much karmic crap out of this place as possible. There's, a lot of, there's an infinite amount of karmic crap around here. So... Um, Suddenly, you know, you might be not being hit by, you might have transcended all your personal karma, but now suddenly you're, even all these other, 
feelings and these other situations are flaring up. And that, I'd say, is a deeper intent while in the physical body or while there's some attachment to the physical body. Now you're taking on collective karma. So suddenly you might go, that might be like, you know, that, you know, in India, uh, you know, in order for the light to come into certain things that are bogged down within the collective in India, certain things need to be now be pulled up and trans transformed through, through that conduit, which is uh, Mother Teresa's consciousness, which is at a very high level. So now some murky stuff comes up for a period of time as, as she's not only clearing her, her individual stuff, maybe all her, most likely a lot of, most of the individual stuff is gone at enlightenment, but if one is trying to clear collective stuff, even if one isn't consciously aware of that, to be a saint is, you know, oh, I want to clear the suffering of every, what, every human being. Uh, to have that intent is, uh, means that, you know, you can be bringing up stuff from the collective. Um, so there can be those reasons. But when you have a teacher higher on who understands karma, like I remember Hokin saying he would have explained that to her. You know, otherwise it can see you don't have a contextualization. You know, you're in a state of bliss and enlightenment, and then suddenly some, you know, you're not in a state of bliss. And it can be contextualized as the abandonment of God. Have I done something wrong? What, why has the, the bliss? That's, that's my understanding of it. Um, so, um, for myself, my, my contextualization is uh, uh, unconditional surrender. Unconditional surrender. Uh, to God, if you like. So it means that I transcend all my negative beliefs, transcend all duality, transcend any, anything that's meaningful in this world to make it meaningless, to be in a position of neutrality around it. But if a state of, whether a state of bliss or no bliss happens, is that, that's, that's, that's okay. I surrender to that. Um, the other thing is, that it does, it's not really important. If you do consciousness research, you know, if you're at if you're at a level of enlightenment, whether there's bliss or not, you're still at that level. So you're still clearing. You're still of grace. You know, like one enlightened teacher through uh, muscle testing, kinesiologic research, is counterbalancing the negativity. Something like what was it uh, a million, two, three millions? A, a lot of people. So it's a kind of um, you know, I, I, I have a picture of it a bit like a, a vacuum. You know, to be at those high levels of consciousness, you'll vacuum out the darkness of everything around you. So you might not always be in a state of bliss. That's the dark side, <laughs> dark side, mm -hmm. uh, which is not, might put people off. But if you want to be an avatar or a saint, an avatar or a saint is not just interested in transcending their individual karma and, and, and going into enlightenment, ASAP, like a mystic might. Uh, they would also have spiritual intent to take out as much suffering from the world as possible in this lifetime as possible. You know, so I had the thing, I'll just quickly share it in, in this room. I was sharing about it a bit earlier before. Like I watched this DVD, some of you who are Hawkins fans have watched it. Like Hawkins would sit like like this on a chair and radiate out, out love, like a mudra, into the universe for all those who are suffering all those suffering in the world, he'd just send out his love and just sit there and just, you know, like a transformer, send out love to those who are suffering. And then, you know, and then it was, you know, the thing of it came to me like, as an intuition that, you know, I got kidney failure and I was in the pits of darkness and hell. And then there was suddenly there was a light and there was a message to find a spiritual solution. And then, and then after a period of time, someone handed me a DVD of Dr. Hawkins. And I had another spiritual experience. And then I was pulled to his work. And that, those, those kind of things, you know. So some are, you know, some are interested in getting out of suffering. Some are interested in clearing the karma. Um, and also, the, here's the thing as well. At, even at high levels, one is not yet conscious of one's higher spiritual intent. Does that make sense? Like at a soul level or a spiritual level, there could be karmic contracts, karmic things which are out of awareness, uh, which one is still being run by. Like, you know, prior to this incarnation, like, you know, you could say that my higher self thought, hey, you should go down there and, you know, clear out as much suffering from this place as possible, not just look after yourself. So that means on some level that you're not just in 
to escape here as possible. <coughs> you know, if there's, it's like an agreement with the with the collective to take out as much negativity as possible, which may mean that you know you're not going to be in constant Hello. states of bliss. 